Hello students, today let us study about the topic insects of industrial importance under the subject agrochemical and pest control. Honey is perhaps the most economically valuable product from insects. Apiculture is a commercial enterprise in most parts of the world and many forest tribes have been dependent on honey as a major source of nutrition. Honey bees can also act as pollinators of crop species. Many predators and parasitic insects are encouraged and augmented in modern agriculture. Silk is extracted from both red caterpillars as well as from the wild. Sericulture deals with the techniques for efficient silkworm rearing and silk production. Although new fabric materials have substituted silk in many applications, it continues to be the material of choice for surgical sutures. Lac was once extracted from scale insects, but it is now replaced by synthetic substitutes. The dye extracted from cochineal insects was similarly replaced by technological advances. The idea of insects as human food, entomophagy, has been proposed as the solution to meet the growing demand for food, but it has not gained widespread acceptance. Hence, in this episode, the following aspects are going to be seen. They are sericulture, apiculture, beekeeping and forestry, production of biocontrol agent, that is production of trichogramma, finally mass production of chrysoperla carnea. Let us study about the aspects one by one. The first aspect, sericulture. No other fabric has fascinated man so continuously over millennia as silk. It is royal in its splendor, exotic and sensuous in its radiance. An aura of luxury has always surrounded and still surrounds clothes made of silk. No other fabric drapes more beautifully or flatters the body more than silk. Silken shine, silken soft and silken smooth. These epithets show that the queen of fabrics is a symbol of beauty, plain and simple. Sericulture is an art of rearing silkworm for the production of cocoons, which is the raw material for the production of silk. India has the unique distinction of being the only country producing all the five kinds of silk, mulberry, eri, Muga, Tropical Tassar and Temperate Tassar. But in Tamil Nadu, mostly mulberry silk is produced. The larva of mulberry silk moth, Bombyx mori, is a domesticated form which feeds on the leaves of mulberry tree, that is Morus alba. The larva of mulberry silk moth grows for about 20 to 23 days feeding mulberry leaves. The fully matured larva spins to protect itself just before the pupa stage. A cocoon out of the most expensive and purest thread, silk. Different steps are followed under sericulture. They are moriculture, silkworm seed production, silkworm rearing, marketing of cocoons, silk reeling and silk weaving. Let us study the steps one by one. The first step Moriculture Cultivation of mulberry plants is referred to as moriculture. It is an agricultural activity. In Tamil Nadu, mulberry cultivation is mainly taken up in irrigated condition. Flat, deep, fertile, well-drained loamy and clay loamy with good moisture holding capacity soil is ideal for mulberry cultivation. The next step is Silkworm seed production. The silkworm seed production centers referred to as grainages. The silkworm seeds known as disease free layings are prepared in their centers and supplied to the farmers for rearing. Both government and private sector grainages are involved in this activity. The third step 
is silkworm rearing. Silkworm rearing is considered to be an agro-based cottage industry since it involves mulberry cultivation. Silkworms are reared for the production of cocoons which is the raw material for the silk production. The farmers rear silkworms and produce cocoons. By marketing the cocoons, the farmers earn money. It is ideally suited for the rural areas of sericulture states. Silkworms are reared in well-ventilated rearing shed following shoot rearing method. The next step in sericulture is marketing of cocoons. The farmers can sell the cocoon produced by them in the nearest government cocoon markets. In the cocoon markets, reasonable floor price is fixed by scientific methods and the final selling price is decided in the open auction. Here, silk reelers buy the cocoons produced by the farmers for producing silk. The next step is silk reeling. Extraction of silk filament from cocoons by employing a set of processes is known as silk reeling. Presently, silk reeling is done using three types of reeling devices that is charka, cottage basins and multi-end basins. Poor quality cocoons can be reeled economically on charka. About 50% of silk produced is of charka and about 35-40% to is at cottage basins and a small quantity of silk is from multi-end reeling. The next step is silk weaving. The raw silk cannot be directly used for weaving. The raw silk is to be twisted before they are fed into looms. The operation of conversion of raw silk into twisted silk is termed as twisting. The twisted silk is referred to as ready silk. Twisting is undertaken either by separate entrepreneurs or by the weavers themselves. The silk weaving is done either on hand looms or power looms. The traditional silk saris and dhotis are made on hand looms, whereas the printed saris, dress materials, etc. are made on power looms. <music>
the beekeepers operate under varying conditions and with widely differing resources available to them. This great diversity in bees and in beekeeping practices explains why there is little beekeeping literature that is widely applicable. For example, the beekeeping practiced in temperate climate Europe is very different from the beekeeping of tropical Africa even though the honeybee is of the same species Epis mellifera and looks similar. In fact, their biology and behavior differ significantly. Moving on to the third aspect that is beekeeping and forestry. Forests provide excellent resources for bees and beekeeping and bees are a vital part of forest ecosystem. Indigenous bee species are natural forest resources and beekeeping enables their exploitation by humans for valuable products without necessarily damaging the honeybee population or extracting anything except the products, honey and beeswax. People living in or near tropical forest and woodlands are among the poorest in the world, often depending on shifting cultivation for their food and local wood as their fuel source. To conserve forest, local people must be assured of sources of food and income that are sustainable without being environmentally damaging. Beekeeping fits this category so perfectly, that is by using locally available renewable resources, forest beekeeping is an environmentally sound activity, yet one that enables forest dwelling people to harvest products that can be of world quality. In working to retain natural environments, it is widely understood that habitats cannot be protected without the interest and involvement of the local people. Beekeeping offers a good way for people to create income from natural resources without damaging them. In fact, beekeeping contributes to the maintenance of biodiversity by pollination. When beekeepers are supported and have access to good markets for their products, they are motivated to support local conservation efforts. Bees and trees are interdependent and have been perfecting their relationship for over 50 million years. The fourth aspect is production of biocontrol agent. Under this, let us study about the production of trichogramma. The genus trichogramma is cosmopolitan in distribution and present in all terrestrial habitats and is one of 80 genera in the family Trichogrammatidae. Trichogramma are primary parasitoids eggs of Lepidoptera, but parasitism also occurs in eggs of other orders such as Coleoptera, Diptera, Hemiptera, Hymenoptera and Neuroptera. It is important for plant protection because of its widespread natural occurrence and its success as biocontrol agent by mass releasing. Since this parasitoid kills the pest in the egg stage itself before the pest could cause any damage to the crop and also that it is quite amenable to mass production in the laboratories. It has the distinction of being the highest produced and most utilized biological control agent in the world. Trichogrammatidae includes the smallest of insects ranging in size from 0.2 to 1.5 mm. Trichogramma are difficult to identify because they are so small and have generally uniform morphological characters. Also. Certain physical characteristics such as body color and the number and length of body hairs can vary with body size, season, rearing, temperature and the host on which the adults was raised. A major advance in the systematics of trichogramma was the discovery that 
characteristics of male genitalia can be used to identify species. This is the primary means of identification today. But body color, wing venation and features of the antennae serve as supporting characteristics. Females cannot be identified with the same level of confidence. So, collections submitted for identification must include males in addition to physical characteristics. Studies of reproductive compatibility and mode of reproduction also have been especially valuable in identifying these species. Let us study about the mass production of trichogramma. Different species and strains of trichogramma typically prefer different host eggs and crop habitats and they have different searching abilities and tolerance to weather conditions. Efficacy is improved by selecting the most effective and adapted species or strain for the specific crop or pest situation. In the laboratory, the parasitoids are multiplied on corchyra eggs. The eggs laid by the corchyra moths are collected and sieved to remove the moth scales etc. The pure eggs thus obtained are exposed to ultraviolet light in an ultraviolet chamber to kill the host embryo but at the same time permit parasitization. The quantity of the sterilized eggs is assessed in a measuring cylinder volumetrically. The eggs in volume of 6 cubic centimeter are then sprinkled uniformly over a 144 grams per square meter chart paper card of 30 into 18 centimeter size. The card is then divided into two halves of 30 into 9 centimeter. Lengthwise, it is subdivided again into 15 grids that is grid 1 to grid 15 of size 2 cm. The dimension of each grid is 7 into 2 cm. Each grid can accommodate 0 0.2 cubic cm of the eggs. Label information on the manufacturer, species of the parasitoid, date of parasitization and expected date of emergence are given in the leftover spaces of size 30 into 1 centimeter on the top and bottom of each half of the card. A coat of 10% gum arabic is applied on the grids grid 1 to 30 and the eggs are sprinkled uniformly in a single layer with the aid of a tea strainer. The excess eggs pasted are removed by gently passing a shoe brush over the card after sufficient air drying under a fan. The egg cards are placed into polythene bags of suitable size and the nucleus card of trichogramma are introduced into it. The easiest way to accomplish this is to place a piece of trico egg card containing parasitized eggs that are ready to yield the adults and to hold them in subdued light for 2-3 to three days. The emerging parasites readily parasitize the fresh eggs. The parasitoid host ratio is adjusted accordingly to 1 is to 6 to get effective parasitism. The parasitized eggs in the trico card turn back in 3 or 4 days and the adult parasitoids emerge in 8 to 10 days from the date of parasitization. The parasitized eggs in which the parasitoids in the larval or pupa stage can be stored in the refrigerator for about 3 weeks without any losses in emergence. The precautions to be taken include poor quality of mass red trichogramma can result in control failures. The artificial conditions of mass rearing can select for genetic changes that reduce the effectiveness of the trichogramma in the field. Such rearing conditions include rearing multiple generations on unnatural host eggs the absence of plants, crowding and interference, rapid generation time and failure to rejuvenate genetic stock. Except for obvious problems such as lack of adult emergence or wing deformities, 
growers and pest consultants cannot detect poor quality trichogramma prior to the release. Commercial suppliers are responsible for maintaining desirable characteristics necessary for good performance in the field. Production colonies should be periodically replaced with individuals from a stock culture maintained on the natural or target host. Suppliers also should assess the percent host egg parasitization, adult emergence and the sex ratio of emerged adults to be sure they are within acceptable standards. Standards for established cultures on Corkyra are 95 plus or minus 5% egg parasitization, 90 plus or minus 5% adult emergences and a sex ratio of 1 to 1.5 females per male. Moving on to the last aspect that is mass production of Chrysoperla carnea. In India, 65 species of chrysopids belonging to 21 genera have been recorded from various crop ecosystems. Some species are distributed widely and are important natural enemies for aphids and other soft-bodied insects. Among them, Chrysoperla carnea is the most common. It has been used in cotton ecosystem for protection from aphids and other soft-bodied insects. Chrysoperla carnea is now used extensively all over the country. The production procedure for Chrysoperla carnea includes In mass production, the adults are fed on various types of diets. The larvae are either reared in plastic tubes or empty injection vials or in groups in large containers or in individual cells. The most common method for the production of chrysopids is detailed as follows. The adults are first collected daily and transferred to pneumatic glass troughs or GI round troughs which is of 30 cm into 12 cm that is length into breadth. Before allowing the adults the rearing troughs are wrapped inside with a brown sheet which act as egg receiving card. About 250 adults, 60% females are allowed into each trough and covered with white nylon or georgette cloth secured by rubber band. On the cloth outside, three bits of foam sponge which is 2 square inch dripped in water is kept. Besides, an artificial protein-rich diet is provided in a semi-solid paste form in three spots on the cloth outside. This diet consists of one part of yeast, fructose, honey, proteinix R and water in the ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. The adults lay eggs on the brown sheet and the adults are collected daily and allowed into fresh rearing troughs with fresh food. From the old troughs, the brown paper sheets along with chrysopa eggs are removed. Finally, to conclude with today's topic, insects that attack humans or anything of value to humans are termed pests. Many of these are mutually competitive with humans for the world's food supply. Other insects are benefactors of humans as they devour the carcasses of dead animals, pollinate orchards, manufacture honey or simply serve as another link in the food chain of the animal kingdom. For humans eat the animals including fish and birds which in turn live upon the insects. Thank you.